My name is Yaakov Glasser, and along with everyone else, I'm trying to make my way through the incredible and extraordinary challenge that we are facing in our community today in our response to the coronavirus pandemic. For many of us, we are going to be spending this Shabbos uh, not in shuls. Many of our children will be home from school over the course of this week. And there's going to be a real change in our daily life and in how we relate to communal life and how we relate to our general rhythm of religious observance. And I wanted to share some chizuk with regards to not only all of the information and guidance that we're following, which is so important in terms of the sur meira, of protecting ourselves and making sure that our health is at its, at its uh, prime in terms of our priorities, but also the ase tov. Uh, some of what we can accomplish in a time like this, some of the growth that we can experience through a tremendous challenge that is facing our community and that is facing our homes. We find ourselves uh, in the weeks preceding Pesach, and it's important to remember that Pesach really captures the formation of the Jewish people as a nation, as an Am, and the carbon that will initiate Klal Yisrael's relationship to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as a nation, through the medium of tefillah, through the medium of prayer, of course begins with the Korban Pesach, and the very first Korban Pesach is offered in the framework of the home. Because the foundation of the Kedusha of Klal Yisrael is ultimately found in the home. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells us, V'asuli mikdash, v'shachanti b'socham, he's creating a space for the community to come together to bring all of that individual Kedusha from our homes into a coalescing environment that allows us to connect with the Rabbonu Sholem in such a profound way. And that is what our Mikdash Mi'at accomplishes as well. But we have to remember that fundamentally, there's tremendous capacity for Kedusha in the home. And perhaps when we find ourselves in circumstances where we are unable to allow ourselves to be in more public spaces and in our shuls, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to revisit and reveal and recapture the intense sanctity that could exist within each of our homes, to transform our homes from simply places that we exist in the time period between the harried life of work and of obligations and of things that we have to get done and of all of the online engagement into spaces of Kedusha, into spa spaces of sanctity, into spaces of connection. It's an opportunity for us in this particular environment, even though we have to give up on some of the chances that we have to connect with the Rabbon Shalom in the space of the Mikdash, to reinvigorate the way in which our home can also become a mikdash. To remember that the Kedusha of Kla Yisrael began in the context of the family, in the context of the Avos. That this is us getting back to our roots. This is us reclaiming our foundation in a certain way and allows us to focus ourselves on what that home looks like. How much time and attention do we really give to the environment of our home? to the Lashon Hara in our home, to the Divrei Torah in our home, to the standards in our home, to the opportunities that we have to create so many moments of connection with our families within our home. And so I believe that part of what we wanna to try to accomplish during this time is to revisit and re-engage that very sacred space for our own personal growth. And I would like to share some suggestions, suggestions that apply in particular to families that are going to have young children at home over the next coming days. And as we work to transition the sentiment and the emotions and the sense of experience of all of this from what to many of them is quite frightening and quite isolating to a space where we can accomplish things that are proactive and engaging and inspiring and uplifting, I have some suggestions that I'd like to share in terms of things that we can do, practically speaking, in the context of our homes. So first of all, I believe that it would be incredibly helpful to create some structure in the home. Even though many of our kids will be home from school and there is a checklist of things that we know need to happen throughout the day, whether it's davening, whether it's learning, whether it's online connections to school, whether it's mealtimes, 
There's something to creating an entire environment of structure in the home that allows kids to feel and allows families to feel that there is a grounded and anchored sense of rhythm and context to the way in which we're le leading our lives at this time. So my first recommendation is to create a space for tefillah, to create a Beis HaKnesses in the home, to consecrate an area of the house, and that becomes the family's shul. To set up folding chairs, if you have, in a, in a structured manner, to create a mechitza that kids can construct and can decorate with all sorts of themes, to, in fact, name the shul, to create all sorts of rituals around the shul, that each family member should choose a sitter that becomes their sitter, not just in terms of it's helpful for germs, but also in terms of connecting to tefillah in a personal way to have a formal experience where we have a Chanukas Beis uh, HaKnesses of this shul in our house. So it's not, did everybody daven this morning? It's, did, we're going to shul now. This is the shul, this is the new shul. The shul is taking place in our home. Shul is not outside the orbit of our religious experience at this time. So as I mentioned, to, to allow kids to participate in decorating, allow kids to participate in different things, um, one suggestion could be for each family member to pick a particular tefillah that resonates with them. Print out that tefillah and hang it up in the shul so that there's some sort of personalized experience. There are lists of cholim going around that could be recited with the family together. And to create specific times where davening takes place in the home. There is a shachris and it's happening at 8 o'clock, at 7.30, at whatever time it is. And the parents and the children, if that's the applicable situation in your context, or the children, everybody davens together. The family davens together. Not just everyone random does whatever their schedule allows. And there's a certain sense of coming together. Uh, I think that, and, and therefore there's structured timing. There's a minchamariv time, there's a shachris time, there are particular ways to do this. I think we could also simulate some of the idiosyncrasies of the shul Shabbos experience to create announcements for your family's shul for this Shabbos with the name of the shul, listing the times to tefillah, listing mazel tovs to members of the family for things that they accomplished over the course of the day. Maybe someone in the family writes the Dvar Torah. Maybe someone in the family reads the announcements to everyone else. There is a way to embrace some of the rhythm of our, our religious life and just put it in a different context, in a different framework, and that gives the family just a certain anchored sense of greater stability and greater, greater focus. Torah learning, I think we could create special areas of the home that are devoted to Torah learning. Set up a base medrash, spill a little bit of coffee on the, on the tablecloth to consecrate it as a base medrash. Move some of the svarim off the shelves to that area, create a space. This is where we are gonna be doing our learning. This is where the family will do our learning. One could make a schedule of goals and incentives for individuals in the family, collectively as a family. We could run parent-child learning programs in the home, which include learning for a particular period of time, somebody sharing a short story at the end, a raffle for a prize, some nosh, recreating certain atmospheres. One could put up posters in this area that relate to Talmud Torah or relate to various heroes of Torah, perhaps some of the sukkahs decorations that we have in our basements we could take out and decorate that area. Another idea is that many of our kids are going to be learning online to create with poster board frames for the computer that are decorated with different themes from different subjects, from different ideas, so that it's not just staring at a, at a, at a sterile screen the whole day, but there is some thematic, um, entertaining, exciting color and sense of engagement. That's also something that, that I think we could do. Tzedakah and chesed. Yes, many of us are going to be stuck at home, but perhaps a focus on chesed, a focus on tzedakah. Take out all the tzedakah boxes that we have in the home for the different organizations. Give each child a certain amount of money. Allow them to discuss how they're prioritizing their tzedakah each and every day. Let that become a formal part of the day. Perhaps allowing the kids, perhaps encouraging the kids and the adults to connect with a particular older person that's more isolated in the community. And each day a phone call is made at a particular time. There's a time that we're all doing chesed together. This is our chesed hour. This is our tzedakah hour. To bring a certain sense of, of community and a certain sense of, of connection. 
I also think creating a happy place, taking a corner of the house and maybe ordering online uh, streamers and posters and balloons and creating a certain section of the house where we can go to just recreationally enjoy ourselves a little bit and a certain sense of, of letting go, a certain sense of connection, a certain sense of being able to, to be with each other, not just in whatever the chaos is of that particular space in the home, but that there's a part of the home that's consecrated for enjoyment and for, for having a good time, for joking around, for, for connecting in that way. I think music in the home could provide so much. Let the kids, if it's applicable, make different Spotify lists or different playlists of different music for different moods, different themes. Let there be a family theme song, a song that the whole family feels that we could rally around. Let that song launch the day and let it end the day. There are so many different ways that we can look around our homes and see the potential for creating the excitement and learning, the excitement in tefillah, the excitement of being together in the home. And perhaps if we can focus ourselves in, not just on the Sur Meira, which is of course our top priority, but also on the Asei Tov, the ways in which we can infuse the environment with a certain sense of spirituality and positivity and optimism, then Yehir Ratzon, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu answers our tefillos and we eventually pass from this crisis, will emerge not only returning to the shuls, returning to the schools, starting again all of the different obligations that we have, but will return to new homes, homes that have experienced this permeating atmosphere and environment of a sense of kedusha, a sense of sanctity, a sense of connection, and will have grown from the experience. And perhaps with that, we will be zocha to being able to emerge from this incredible nisayon not only having saved the guf, but also having nurtured the neshama. Yeratzon, we all daven that a Kodesh Baruch Hu should have rachamim and all those who are ill and all of those that are, are struggling with this in so many different ways. And I know how difficult it is on so many different levels. A Kodesh Baruch Hu should give das and bina and wisdom to the leaders of our community who are shouldering incredibly challenging decisions. And a Kodesh Baruch Hu should bless all of us with Tremendous refuah and tremendous hatzlacha. Have a wonderful day.